what's going on everybody today we are going to go through how to set up a home security system or more accurately i guess a home surveillance system using uh, security cameras for hopefully the least amount of money now you might have heard of the wise cameras before uh, here at least in the us you can get them on amazon the version 3 is for about 35 bucks i have seen them down in about the 20s i believe when i bought mine it was a two pack for $50, so about 25 bucks a piece. It seems like prices have gone up a little bit on these. However, yep, here is the pack that I bought a while ago. Oh wow, looks like the price has actually doubled on that one. But those are also the version twos and pricing on those is probably weird because they're basically a discontinued product now. Now what I have here and what we're going to be setting up in this video is two WISE cameras. One of them is a version 2 and the other is one of the newer version 3s. Uh, the version 2 is just left over from my two packs of two that I bought. I have three currently in service at my house right now. I don't really have a use for this fourth one. And the version 3 was just one I snagged off of eBay for about $25 I think. Uh, just to kind of see if it was any better than the version 2s, see what the differences are. Uh, I haven't even opened it yet, so this will be the first time that it is being unboxed. And if you're setting up these cameras, you are going to need an SD card, at least for what we're going to do with them, and preferably an SD card reader so that you can get the uh, firmware we're going to flash onto it. Now, there are going to be some assumptions made about some equipment that you probably have lying around, and obviously some assumptions made about what kind of network you have set up. So, so kind of the overall price on this is really going to be all over the place but i'm gonna try at least for my sake being a nerd that has a whole bunch of electronics lying around and also just somebody who's been through a few iterations of their home computer um, i am going to be kind of taking that into account that some of this stuff won't be free for you but you might probably have some of this lying around somewhere so basically the way wise cameras works you've got your home wi-fi and then you've got your wise camera and the cameras are set up and managed through your phone using the WISE app. And pretty much your cameras and your WISE app connect back to the WISE cloud. And if you want to archive your footage or have continuous recording going on or clips that are longer than I believe it's 12 seconds, you have to pay per month for the WISE like premium service to have all of that uh, functionality, which isn't always ideal. Now what you could do um, to have continuous recording is just put in your SD card into each of your cameras and it'll record locally. But let's say because we're just weird, we want to actually have a full blown like home security setup, almost in the way that businesses do where we have a console where it's constantly recording. We can go back, we can archive footage, we can set up detection zones and all of that stuff. We don't want to be just limited to our phone and the camera and wise as a company controlling their wise cloud let's say we want to have a server that all of this is being recorded to now there is a problem with this the wise cameras by default they don't use a protocol that'll work with most of these um nvr software solutions so what we're going to have to do is flash um, a firmware onto the camera which will enable it to use what's called rtsp which is real-time streaming protocol and that's the protocol that's pretty much accepted by every major uh, NVR software out there and once we do that then we are just going to install some sort of NVR software there are multiples that you can use but we're going to install it on just a spare piece of hardware that we have lying around be that a laptop or an old desktop and shoot you can even install NVR software on a Raspberry Pi if you pick the right one and it really doesn't matter there's versions for Windows there's versions for Linux there's pretty much an NVR software to suit your needs out there that you can install on whatever hardware you already have. Now, little note here, you are going to be limited if you're going to deploy just like a stupid 20 camera setup and just have cameras everywhere and archive and continuously record every one of them. You are going to want some hardware that, you know, is at least from this century because there is a lot of data going in and out of the server and it will take a lot of CPU depending on how many cameras you have. If you're just running a one or two camera setup, most hardware is going to be able to handle that just fine. And if you don't have a computer lying around with like a whole bunch of storage for all the videos, don't worry about that. There is such thing as an external hard drive, which hopefully we will be setting up in this video. So these are the assumptions that I'm going to make. We're going to get two cameras, which is roughly 
I don't know, like 65 bucks for the two wise cameras, depending on where you get them from. An SD card, uh, you really don't need one for both. You really only need one of them because we can put the firmware on it. And once we flash it, it's on the internal memory of the camera. So we don't have to have that SD card in all of our cameras, but that'll probably cost you around 10 bucks. An external hard drive, I believe you can get the four terabytes still for around 70. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. And also that's going to depend largely on where you're at and where you buy it from. And we're just going to assume you have a spare PC lying around and you already have a wireless network set up. So grand total for this setup will be somewhere around 150 bucks ish. And if you have SD cards lying around, that's less you have to pay. And also if you have external hard drives lying around like me, somehow I've amassed like five, at least two terabyte external hard drives just over the years from school and work and whatnot. Uh, you can also use USB drives or whatever if you have those lying around. Um, you can easily knock off that $70 price tag if just for some reason you have a hard drive in your house. So really the only cost you're down to is the cameras with this. Because um, we're going to assume that the NVR software that we're going to use is going to be free. However, there are a lot of options when it comes to the software and a lot of them are paid options. And speaking of the NVR software, I was going to show you the article that I kind of used to uh, pick the one I was going to use for this video, but it looks like I can't get to it. I think this was the one from phenomsecurity.com. I can't be 100% sure because I can't view it, but uh, basically it just lists all of the available NVR um, software that you have both open source, free, and paid. But I'll just list a few here for you to take a look at. I believe Shinobi is one. I think that one's free or at least open source. There is Blue Iris, which is a paid version. I think it's about uh, $80 for a lifetime license. That is actually the one that I use just because I like the interface and I run it on a Windows machine and it's very easy to install and set up on Windows. However, the downside of Blue Iris is that it is Windows only. And it appears that my drawing tablet decided to stop working on me, so here is the rest of what I was going to write out there. Um, yeah, Blue Iris is Windows only, and then there is Zone Minder, which is actually what we're going to set up in this video. Uh, fair warning, it is not available on Windows, and it is kind of complicated to set up, but there are some good guides for it, and I'm able to get it off the ground fairly quickly. And once it's running, uh, it's been pretty good for me, at least over the past month that I've been trying it out. So your mileage may vary, but it's a good free solution. But I do recommend Blue Iris if you are going to be using Windows and if you don't mind paying a little bit for the software. So now that that's all out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into getting our cameras ready. So first thing we're going to want to do is just head over to Google and just look for Wise Cam RTSP. And I will leave a link down in the description for this, but there is a nice article here from the people who are nice enough to come up with this firmware, which is not a stock feature. It is not included and it's not supported by WISE. So without the developers behind this, this wouldn't even be possible. But what we're going to do is just kind of follow this guide. Uh, you can read about what RTSP is and support for RTSP, but we're going to download both of the version 2 and version 3 RTSP firmware files because we're running both versions of the camera. I'm going to go ahead, click the link, download complete, click the link, download complete. And in the instructions down here, it says for the Wisecam V2 and pan, we're going to want to unzip it and rename the contents to demo and transfer it to the root directory of an SD card. And then for the version 3, we're going to transfer just the bin file as it is to the root directory. So let's go ahead and open up our SD card, throw that into our SD card reader, whichever one you may have, and then just plug that into our computer. Once it's plugged in, we're just going to browse to the root directory of our SD card, and then extract and copy over the contents of our files that we just downloaded. So I'm gonna go ahead, right click this, uh, I'm just going to extract here, and you can see we get this file, demo version two RTSP. The directions just said to rename this to demo.bin, and we're going to go ahead and copy that over to our flash drive. Now, because we're just going to be using one flash drive, we're only going to want to copy one of these at a time. So we're going to start with the version two and then come back here, copy over version three and flash that. But before we get to flashing the firmware, we need to actually get our wise cameras set up the way we normally would if we didn't even plan on doing any of this. So we're going to go ahead and plug our wise camera in which it appears that I've lost the power adapter for my version two. So 
Let's crack open the version 3 and just steal the power adapter real quick. And just plug the power adapter into the back of our wise cam here. Oh, I said power adapter, I meant the power cable. And plug this in. And what we should see is a series of lights as it boots up. And as we're waiting on that, let's go ahead and move over to our phone where we've already downloaded the Wise app from the App Store. This is an iPhone. And I already have my cameras uh, set up. But we're just going to add a new one. So if we just go to the top, hit the plus, add a device, we're gonna select cameras, and we're gonna select just the Wise cam at the very top. And it's gonna walk us through some of the stuff we've already done and then the rest of the setup. So plug it into a power outlet, we've already done that. The light behind the Wise cam will flash yellow shortly after. I believe it already did that. Right now the light is off. So we're going to go next. And then it says pull the base away from your wise cam and press setup under the camera. So pull the base away and there is a button right here. We're just going to press it. Ready. It makes a noise and says ready to connect. So we're going to check that we heard that noise. Hit next. Then we're going to select our wireless network that we want the camera to connect to. So for me, that's December ready. Illini. And I already have the password saved for it. So I'm going to hit next. And then it says to scan this QR code with the camera. So pretty much all you gotta do is hold your phone in front of the camera. It says QR code scanned. So we're gonna select that we heard that, hit next, and then it's gonna connect to the camera. Once it says setup completed, we can name it, assign it to a room, whatever we're just gonna do. We'll do test version two, because this is our version two camera. Hit finish. It's gonna ask us to pay for a bunch of crap, and I don't care. And I don't really wanna share it. And there we go, we have a live feed from our test version two camera. So it is ready to go. And if we go back on our app, we see it in our main list where we can click on it, go to settings and look at the device info and see its IP address, its firmware version, network, yada, yada. Now, I believe that I've already flashed this particular camera to use RTSP. Um, the only way you can find out is if you go to advanced settings, and scroll to the bottom, if you have the RTSP option, which you can see this already has, then that means it's already got the RTSP firmware flashed to it. And you can see I have it enabled and it gives us the RTSP link, which we'll use with our NVR software later. But we are gonna reflash this anyway because this is a video on how to do that. So at this point, we are going to take our SD card out of the computer that we used to flash it, go back to our RTSP directions, remove the micro SD card from the reader. And then what we wanna do is unplug our wise camera, put in the SD card, make sure it snaps in there. There we go. And then kinda of put the base off to the side where you can hold the setup button for quite a while. So press down the setup button and then plug it in. And the directions say to do this and hold down the setup button until the light turns solid blue. And once it's solid blue, we can release the setup button. There it is, solid blue, releasing the setup button. And then it says to wait a few minutes, the camera will reboot and the status light will change during that time. So let's go ahead, put it down, wait for it to reboot and the light to change. And then it says that once the process is finished, you should see the camera in the home tab without having to go through the setup process as long as it was previously paired. So that's why we paired it first, just to go ahead and get it into the app uh, connected to our account. And then we go about flashing it with RTSP and it'll stay in the account. We don't have to do anything extra. We just have to set up RTSP. And right now it is alternating between uh, yellow and blue light. And I believe that should go to a solid blue once it's done. Or apparently I'm wrong, it's just gonna turn off. So let's go back to our phone and back to our main menu, click on our test V2 camera. And if it comes up, then we're good to go. Yep, there it is. We got a video feed from it. Let's go to settings. Make sure we still have that RTSP option. So advanced settings, scroll down. Yep, still have RTSP. And it did retain the uh, settings that I'd already had in there. So let's just go ahead and make note of that. We don't need this link right this second, but we will need that once we get the NVR software going. Now at this point, let's go ahead and set up our version three camera. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this one since I only have one power adapter. I'm gonna take that SD card out of it. The firmware will still be on the device without the SD card, so don't worry about that. I'm gonna put it back into our reader and connect it back to my computer. And once it's connected, let's go ahead and open it back up as well as our downloads. And we can see that the camera actually created some additional folders and stuff on the card because when we first put it in there, it kind of set it up to use it just as its own uh, storage repository. So you can see it put in the record folder and there's probably some clips in here. 
Yep, there we go. So it was already recording some stuff, but we're just gonna delete all that. So delete, yes, and then we're going to take demo version three, extract that into our downloads folder. And then I believe the directions just said to copy that over without changing the file name. So demo wcv3.bin, let's just double check that. Yep, transfer demo wcv3.bin to the root directory. So we're good to go there. We'll go ahead and remove that from the computer now and try to figure out how to get this into the WISE camera version three because I've actually never worked with one of these. I've never seen one in person. This is the first time I'm unboxing it. Lead. Anyways, this isn't an unboxing video for the Wise Cam V3. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and see if we can find where the SD card goes. Oh, looks like they're in the same spot, but we have some rubber grommets on this one. And they appear to be a little bit tricky to get off. So let's get some help here. There we go. Take our SD card and put that in. Don't put it in upside down like I just did. And now that I have the SD card in there, I realize that we need to adopt this to our um, actual account first. But the SD card is already in there. Um, it will not change anything as long as we don't hold, uh, hold that setup button down during boot. Uh, we should be able to just add it to our account just fine without flashing the firmware yet. So I went ahead and plugged it in. You can see we've got a red light on the front of it. Just going to wait for that to do its thing. And while we're waiting, we'll go back to our WISE app and start the process of adding a new device. All right, add device, cameras. This time we're going to select WISE Cam V3. It says it's going to flash red. Yep, that's what it's doing. Click next, pull the base away, press setup under your camera. So we'll go ahead and do that. Sounds like same sound, it says ready to connect. So check that, hit next. Select our wireless network again, December Illini. Password's already filled out. And then it says, hold it in front of the screen again. So setup is exactly the same as the version two. And I heard QR code scan, so we're gonna hit next. Setup. You can go ahead and give it a name of test uh, V3, finish. Don't care about cam plus, don't care about sharing. Connecting to the camera and we have a video feed. And we also have new firmware available to get the latest features. Um, I'm not gonna do that since we're already flashing the RTSP firmware to it. So let's go ahead and go to the cogwheel advanced settings and see if we have RTSP. Nope, we don't because we haven't flashed it yet. So this is what it should look like right out of the box. There should be no option at all for RTSP under advanced settings. So let's go ahead, back out of that, head back to our camera since we already have the SD card in it. And all we're going to do is just give it a quick unplug, kind of finagle this around where we can hold the setup button, hold down the setup button and plug it back in. And we'll wait for the light to do something different than red. Ready to connect. And it looks like I didn't do that right because it's flashing red and it's <laughs> yelling ready to connect at me. So, so unplug it again, hold down setup, and plug it back in. And you know, I really thought that this little dongle thing was cool until I'm trying to do this. And it's kind of hard to plug it in and hold setup at the same time. All right, and there we go. That is not a red light that looks kind of violet or maybe even a little bit pink. So we're just going to wait until this is done. And it looks like it's done. So let's see if we still see it in our uh, settings here. Uh, well, I hit back and it says connecting to camera, and I believe that the reason for that is first time I tried to get it to boot into the SD card, I believe I ended up just resetting it, so I think we lost connection with the camera. So let's just go ahead, hit setup again on the bottom, Connect. and go through the pairing process again. So let's uh, actually go to the settings wheel on this, delete the device. Yes, that's just going to delete it out of our WISE app. Add another device, cameras, WISE Cam V3. Yep, next, heard ready connect, next, select Wi-Fi, next, scan QR code, wait for it to connect, give it the name again, skip through the rest of the crap, and then look at the video feed. Now, when we go to settings again, in advanced settings, when we scroll to the bottom, now we can see RTSP, because we flashed it with that firmware. But this one says it's off, so let's go into those settings, enable RTSP, and we need to give the camera a username and a password. This is whatever you want. It doesn't have anything to do with the WISE app. It doesn't have anything to do with anything at all. And each camera can be set differently or each camera can be set the same. Now on my other camera, I know that I used the username of Netman and I believe the password was just test1234. And all this is for is the NVR software to connect and authenticate with the camera and it'll generate a URL that you will put in to the software once we get it going. So the only thing to note here is that the username and password just has to match when you add it to the NVR system. But at this point, our cameras are ready to go. 
we can still use them as we would um, any other wise camera. They're still going to be in the app. We're still going to be able to interact with them, view them from our phone, view them from the cloud, whatever. Um, if we don't want to do any of that, all we got to do is delete them out of the wise app and just only worry about uh, using them through our NVR software. But if we do need to change any settings or anything else afterwards, then we will have to uh, add them back into the WISE application and change the settings from there. So now that our cameras are all good to go, actually, let's make note of uh, that camera's IP. So head back into RTSP and just take note of this, which all of it is going to be the exact same as the last one. So I'm just gonna copy paste that in my notepad and just change the IP address to 107. So those are the two cameras that we're going to want to add. Now at this point, um, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. This just showed you how to get your WISE cameras set up and flashed with the RTSP firmware so that you can use them with an NVR software solution such as ZoneMinder or Blue Iris or Shinobi or whatever it is that you may already have or are looking to set up. Originally, this was all going to be one video going through the WISE camera setup as well as the NVR setup, but I'm splitting it out into part one and part two. So keep an eye out for part two next week where I actually go into the setup of a zone minder server, which we will use to capture the feeds from these WISE cameras that we just set up and flashed with the new firmware. So hopefully you learned something here, and if you're looking to set up zone minder, uh, just wait until next Monday and that video will be coming to you soon. As always, happy networking.